Hello students, welcome back. We are discussing the chapter, uh, second chapter of standard 11th and we are doing uh, the classification. In that we finish with the kingdom Monera and we are right now talking about kingdom Protista. Mm -hmm. I hope you remember the classification what we are talking about. We are talking about this five divisions of Protista. Protistas are the unicellular eukaryotic organisms and they are considered as the link between the prokaryotes and the funguses, plants and animals. So when I talk about protista, we are going to talk about its five divisions, which is uh, uh, which are uh, those are euglenophyta. The first one is euglenophyta. Second one is okay. The first one is euglenophyta. Second one is chrysophyta. Third is protozoa. Then comes dinoflagellates and the slime molds. So we're going to talk each one of the division individually one by one. And on that note, in the previous session, we have finished with the euglenophyta. Euglenophyta are nothing but the unicellular organisms like euglena. They have a small and a large flagella. They have a vacuole. So we have a small and large flagella present over there. They have a vacuole present on them. And they uh, reproduce uh, by the binary fission method. All this has been discussed in the previous class about euglenophyta. So next what? We are going to start with the next uh, division that is chrysophyta. So we discussed with all these things about what euglenophyta is, what are their flagellas are used for and then we discussed about what type of vacuoles they are having, they are having chloroplasts or not, can they uh, reproduce asexually or not or what are their mode of nutrition. Till here we have discussed in the uh, previous session. Now we are going to start with kingdom protistas next division that is called as chrysophyta. Okay. So, in this class, we will start with the next division of kingdom protista, chrysophyta. Okay. What is the meaning of chrysophyta? These are the organisms which is basically looks like very hard and they have some rigid type of structure present on this particular group of protista. So, what are chrysophyta? Chrysophyta basically are golden brown algae. What are they? They are golden brown algae and they are also called as diatoms. Very important, diatoms are asked so many times in exam, okay. So, about diatoms, you may get questions. You may get questions on diatoms, okay. About diatoms, two marks on diatoms or there may be what are diatoms, what are their uses, those questions may appear. So, this groups includes golden brown algae and diatoms. Majority of the crystophytes are unicellular and colonial. What is the meaning of unicellular? By now, you know the meanings very well, I hope. That unicellular means having a single cell. And what is the meaning of colonial? Colonial means they stay in a colonial form. They are actually present combiningly with each other and they stay in a group. Okay. So these organisms of Christophytes are unicellular and colonial. Okay. Then these organisms are found in marine, fresh water. And most of the species basically are marine, okay. Most of the species are marine over here, but some of them are also found in fresh water also. So, they are basically present in the aquatic environment. They are not found in the terrestrial region. They are microscopic and are planktons, okay. They are microscopic and are planktons. Planktons are those, those tiny floating organisms which is present on the water surfaces and these planktons are the food for the bigger organisms, okay. So, what are these? These are brown algae what we are talking about and they are basically unicellular having a, a colonial uh, type of uh, appearance means they stay in a colony and they are basically marine. Also, they are uh, planktons means they are the tiny floating organisms present on the water bodies. Okay. Next, about Christophyta, uh, we are going to talk about first diatoms. Okay. Christophytes are basically made up of diatoms. Diatoms, as I told you, it is very important. You can just copy down these points if you require for your, uh, you know, notes as a notes because in your NCRT textbooks, every point is given in a paragraph wise and sometimes it becomes very difficult to segregate and study. So, at any point of time, you feel like, okay, you need this information, you can pause the video and you can copy down these points, okay. So, what are diatoms? Diatoms are actually uh, the frustae and they have a two overlapping bulbs. What are they? They are having two overlapping bulbs, okay. Overlapping bulbs 
विच ओवरलैप विथ ईच अदर लाइक अ सोप बॉक्स लाइक अ सोप बॉक्स ना वॉट इज द मीनिंग ऑफ सोप बॉक्स यू हैव सीन अ सोप बॉक्स राइट यू हैव यूज अ सोप बॉक्स देर विल बी अ प्लेस वेर वी आर गोइंग टू कीप द सोप एंड ऑन दैट वी कैन क्लोज इट एज इफ इट इज लाइक अ लिड लिडेड बॉक्स सो देर विल बी समथिंग विच इज गोइंग टू कवर द पर्टिकुलर बॉक्स प्रॉपरली एंड टाइटली so their appearance of these diatoms the name says diatoms there are two something is two so there are two valves present on them and they are overlapping valves they overlap with each other and they close each other in the form of a soap box the cell wall very interestingly you should remember this point very clearly the cell wall of these are made up of silica and they are very hard in appearance okay so the cell wall is made up of silica and consists of two separate unequal halves i'll repeat again the diatoms cell wall is made up of silica silica is one of the very hard substances so they are very rough in appearance and they have two separate unequal halves the two halves are unequal one is called as epitheca and other one is called as hypotheca what are they called as one is called as epitheca epitheca and the other one is called as hypotheca hypotheca now these two overlap with each other like a soap box as i told you it will be like a appearance where we can have a box type of appearance where they close each other right so there will be something which is present down and the other valve is coming and closing the complete structure the cell wall is made up of silica that is why they are very hard and the both the wall is one is called as epitheca and another one is called as hypotheca is it clear what are diatoms diatoms are again present in the marine environment basically and they have this two overlapping valves okay the name diatom itself says that right okay uh, what type of protoplasm they have they have a protoplasm which is peripheral layer of cytoplasm which is basically surrounded by a vacuole they have a protoplasm which is basically surrounded by a vacuole and a single nucleus is present and a cytoplasmic bridge in the vacuole so there are the how many uh, nucleus how many uh, nucleus is there they are having uninucleate they are having one nucleus these are the diatoms and do you observe over there these diatoms are actually having a typical geometric pattern type of structure they are not uh, irregular in shape they have a proper structure if you observe all these diagrams over here they all are having some typical shape like a rod shape or something like a you know a sl uh, slender type like a, a rod type of shapes are there then there is a box type of appearance is there so these diatoms has a typical shape of maintaining uh, you know they have they are very good in maintaining this type of shapes because of their uh, presence of two valves and closing with each other in a proper way what they have they have a peripheral layer of cytoplasm which is surrounded by a vacuole and a single nucleus is present which is uh, cytoplasmic which maintains a cytoplasmic bridge in between the vacuole okay now diatoms are having a, a plastid plastid is the colorful agent what is a plastid what is a plastid plastid is those uh, those uh, molecules cell organelle inside the cell plastid is a cell organelle which contains some pigments present on them and the plastid are called as chromatophores what type of plastid they have they have a plastid that is called as chromatophores okay what is the meaning of chromatophores chromatophores are basically having a color what color they have they have golden green or golden brown in color so the plastids present on them either of golden green or golden brown in color and these plastids are responsible for the typical coloration of the diatoms did you understand what i am telling the plastids color is giving the actual color to the diatoms if a diatoms when we are saying it's a brown algae why it is called as brown algae because of this presence of chromatophores which are actually golden green or golden brown in color it has chlorophyll a chlorophyll b and carotids so they have chlorophyll a chlorophyll b and carotenes as a pigment okay what are the three pigments present on them they have chlorophyll a chlorophyll b and carotenes also reserve food materials are oil and goji tea 
what type of reserve food material diatoms has diatoms has a reserve food material as oil and polyurethane okay okay oil and polyurethane and they don't have any starch present on their body though they are uh, having a, a cell wall rigid cell wall present on them though their appearance is something like a, a plant like having the uh, you know uh, pigments present on them they can prepare their own food all these are there in spite of that we say them there is they don't have a starch generally plants can uh, uh, keep the food material stored in the form of starch but these diatoms doesn't contain starch starch is absent next one diatom cells are not flagellated and they exhibit gliding movement due to the cytoplasm how do they move around in this particular picture do you see anywhere there is a presence of flagella or cilia no right there is no flagella and no cilia is present in diatoms diatoms do not contain this cilia or flagella but still they can move around a little bit not much but there is some movement seen and that is because of the movement of the cytoplasm okay the movement or the flow of the cytoplasm allows the diatoms to move to a very small distance they can't move uh, much because they don't have any locomotory organ like cilia and flagella okay so they are non flagellated they don't have any flagella present on them okay now there is a very good economic importance of diatoms and that is why diatoms are asked so many times in exams okay why we are telling diatoms are important diatoms has a lot of economic importance diatoms are used in the photosynthesizers they are used as photosynthesizers if at all it is required to synthesize uh, the food for that photosynthesizers these diatoms are important the death of a diatom would result in the large deposit which is called as diatomaceous earth what happens when the diatom's uh, life span will end then the covering of the diatom you remember the covering of the diatom is made up of the cell wall is made up of silica right so they are very hard in appearance they left behind all the silicas after the death also so these particular uh, you know dead parts of the diatoms will be cons uh, consisting a particular typical type of land mass that is called as diatomaceous earth what it is called it is called as diatomaceous earth the death of diatoms would result in the large deposit there will be large deposit of the diatoms on the earth surface forming the diatomaceous earth they are employed as a cleaning agent on toothpaste and metal polishes these diatoms the diat diatomaceous earth will be taken from that particular sea shore or from where the diatoms are uh, dead from there because it is hard in appearance this will be uh, go going good with the cleaning agents like the toothpastes and metal polishes on the toothpaste and the polishes they have a little bit of grinding effect they give a little uh, rough appearance and these rough appearance helps them to um makes us use this diatoms as a cleaning agent did you understand so there is a lot of influence of diatoms as you can see that there is a picture of uh, uh pinularia given and this is called as uh, cyclotella uh, do you observe the typical pattern which is seen in diatoms okay uh, if we want we can show this diatoms properly let us see the picture one more time if you see this particular picture you will find out that they have a typical pattern this is cyclo cyclotella cyclotella pattern if you see can you see they have different uh, you know appearance which which shows they have a, a typical type of cell wall arrangement and these cell wall arrangements are very hard and these cell walls are basically helping them to be used as a metal polishes or, or as in the uh, toothpaste because they are rough in appearance so we get a rubbing appearance when we rub with each other na that uh, little rough feeling will be present and that is very beneficial for using it as a cleaning agent so this is about cy uh, cyclostella and uh, this is the example of pinularia okay did you get it so what are the economic importance of diatoms diatoms are used as a photosynthesizer diatoms are also used as a uh, 